Hi, I'm Mark Jardine and this is Sale for Gold Live. We're here in Cowes to give you everything from the Rio 2016 Olympic sailing competition. Monday was the first day for the sailing competition and it was a mixed day for the Brits. Without doubt the star performer was Nick Dempsey with 1-1-2 one, one, results. The first two races he went hard left, Sugarloaf Mountain was a big influence on the racing and he took, took that side, came out at the windward mark top in all three races. The third race, the wind was getting a bit patchy, but what he managed to do was keep in, in with the top bunch and got a solid result, a second place, and he'll be over the moon with his result. In the RSX ladies, it was a bit of a difficult day for Bryony Shaw. Um, up and down results and a little bit of technical problems with an issue on the start line in race two. On the laser courses, Nick Thompson didn't have the best of days. And, but he still ended up in 11, 11th overall in the results and he can definitely salvage things. And also exactly the same for Alison Young. Not the best of days, but in a position where she can definitely salvage things. Last night, I caught up with Andy Rice, who gave me a rundown of everything in Rio. So I'm talking with Andy Rice out in Rio. Um, it looked like the first day was pretty hard on the laser and laser radial course to get any kind of consistency. Um, what was it like out there? Uh, yeah, I think you've got it absolutely right. Uh, you look at the scores and uh, people were really struggling on that course to, uh, to achieve any kind of consistency. Uh, Robert Scheidt, uh, he was 23rd in the first race. He won the next race. And he said about the, 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 the racing that one of the marks was set very close to the shore and that was really influencing the second half of the beat. But he wasn't complaining. He was saying that that's what we've come here for. This, this is the Guanabara Bay, and we've come here for challenging conditions. So even though he wasn't managing to make the best of all of it, he, he says this is what we're in for. But, yeah, that was certainly how things were turning out. And both the Brits, um, Nick Thompson and Alison Young, probably not the regatta they were hoping, the, the start for the regatta they were hoping for. Uh, no, no, uh, very tough starts for them. Um, I didn't see Alison Young at the mix zone afterwards when we get our brief opportunity to interview the sailors. Uh, but Nick Thompson was sounding pretty philosophical about it. Um, and, and he's not doing too badly. I think he's in 11th overall. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think he feels that this uh, regatta has a, a long way to go yet. So, so he looked far from down and out. And actually... Uh, I, I briefly saw Alison Young walk past. She, she didn't look too unhappy either, but I, did, I didn't get a chance to chat to her. And over on the RSX course, it looked like Sugarloaf Mountain was really playing an influence on the course and going hard left on the beat paid off handsomely. Nick Dempsey seemed to be the man who really took advantage of that. Uh, yes, he did, and he won the first two races. But funnily enough, the thing that he was most pleased about was the second in the final race. So he got a 1-1-2, and it was his second place that he was most pleased with because he's, his quote was uh, something like, uh, the wind was just dropping bombs everywhere, and some people were managing to make the most of that, and some people were getting dropped right out of it. And I think he was just looking over his shoulder very nervously, wondering when it was going to drop on him. And um, he, he managed to avoid that. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a real game of snakes and ladders. For, for some of the RSX sailing as well, and somehow he came through with those incredible scores. And Bryony Shaw, not the best of days for her and not the start she'd have wanted. Uh, no, a really tough day for Bryony Shaw. Um, and let's hope that she, she's got the metal to come back from that. I, I think the Brits, um, they're, they're all so experienced. There's, there's so much good knowledge within that team, and they really do operate as a team. Uh, out in Rio and uh, so they'll be rallying around and um, no doubt uh, Nick and Bryony will have shared their experiences today and, and Bryony trying to learn as much as she can about what Nick did so right because uh, even he took himself by surprise today. He was really nervous about um, what could go wrong out there. He, he was worried about hitting debris which I think can affect the wind surface probably more than most. He said it was the best day out there um, in terms of the water quality but uh, from what I've heard, I didn't speak to her directly. Bryony Shaw, I believe, um, did hit some debris in the third race of the day, which accounts for her poor performance in, uh, in some of the racing, um, but it doesn't, doesn't account for her, her performance in the, the earlier two. And how is the Rio atmosphere? 
Um, it's, uh, I mean, everyone is really excited for the things uh, having got going, um, but things are a little bit creaky behind the scenes, it has to be said. This is not the slick operation of London 2012, and, and for example, Jesus Renedo, one of the uh, Spanish photographers that I'm working with, um, he, he bemoans the fact that there's no Rio 2016 logoing on the marks, but um, it, it's sort of about, we, we're sort of just about making the regatta happen, and I think the right people are winning, so it's not getting in the way of the results, but there, there, there's a sense of um, it, it, it's all coming together, but it, it's only just coming together. Okay. Andy, thank you very much for your time, and um, we're all looking forward eagerly to day two of the Olympic sailing competition. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mark. I'm here with Helena Lucas and Ailey McIntyre talking about the first day of racing. Helena, first of all, how should the laser and laser radial sailors manage themselves today after a disappointing first day? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's always hard, you know, it's not to have that awesome start that obviously Nick Dempsey had yesterday. So it's a case you just got to forget about what happened. Um, obviously, you know, learn, learn some lessons, but then put it to bed. You know, to, today's another day and just, you know, take each start at a time, each leg at a time and just, you know, go out there and do your best. And today, Ailey, they're sailing on the Ponty course. Can you tell me a bit about that? We've got a southerly wind. What will it be conditions be like there? Uh, so a Ponty in general is the most stable course in the harbour, which is going to be nice for them. Sometimes you get, um, it pays on one side of the course, but equally it can uh, totally throw you and do something different. So the tide will be really important for them today. And um, I imagine clear starts and being able to sail fast will be what we're looking for from the lasers today. And as you said, Nick Dempsey, a stunning start to the regatta. How should he take things today after getting such a good start to the event? Yeah, I mean, again, it is a case of, you know, just kind of keeping it steady, not getting carried away, you know, only three races in, long way to go yet, but, you know, you can take confidence of, you know, what he's doing is exactly right. He's obviously got great speed out there. He looked so good on the water yesterday that, you know, he can take confidence, I think, from everything that happened. Keep it calm, just stay, you know, just keep self-focused and think about your competition and just keep doing what he's been doing, really. And today he sees the start of the Finns and of course Giles Scott, 26 wins in the last events he's had. Um, what should he do? Out on the Sugarloaf course, but the wind from the opposite direction, what will, what will his priorities be on day one, Ailey? I imagine Giles is just doing what he does every time, you know? <laughs> I can't imagine he's treating it in any other way. He'll just be looking to get off that start line clean, be able to sell his own race. He's notoriously fast, which will help him out on whatever course he's on. Um, that is a particularly difficult course, Sugarloaf. It's very unpredictable, particularly if the wind's a bit funny today. That, that, you know, it could be a difficult day, but I, I'm sure Giles will pull through and, and um, might not get a bang set of results, but he just needs a consistent day. It doesn't need to be Nick Dempsey's day on the first day. It just needs to be couple of top fives yeah. you know that and that will be perfect you know as long as he doesn't get a discard it's fine and of course we forget with Giles all his experience this is his first Olympic Games how do you go about managing the expectation when it is the games itself Helena yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of, Charles seems to have been around forever, doesn't he? But um, yeah, first uh, Olympic Games. And, you know, I, I think that the biggest thing is just trying to normalise regatta. It is, at the end of the day, it's the same as any other regatta. It's the same as World Championships. Yes, there's all the hype around it, but if you can somehow normalise it, then you're, you, you know, you're focused on yourself, you're focused on what you do best. And I think that's the key is just don't get overruled by, by the moment, by the media, by the occasion. Just stick to your processes, do what you know best. And you know, if Giles does that, he'll be absolutely fine. And lastly, Bryony Shaw. Again, not the best start to the event and actually falling off at the start of race two. Um, how can she get her event back on track? Oh, but Bryony's a fighter, you know, we all know that. She's a real fighter. I think she's, she's currently lying 10th overall at the moment. You know, she will get a discard coming in, I imagine, probably after five races. And, you know, Bryony, Bryony will be frustrated and annoyed at herself for, for yesterday. But again, she just needs to put it behind her. She's a fighter and she'll just, you know, go out there with a fresh approach and just, you know, basically go out and do her best. Do you think it's going to be her experience that comes through and 
helps her out in the end, Ailey. Absolutely. I, I was just about to say, she did the same in Beijing. She got an ACS on day one and had to, that was her discard, d- gone. She had to do well, that was it. And, uh, you know, okay, so she's done a relatively similar thing now. She's got one pretty deep result and now from now on she needs to do what she does best but I think she'll thrive off it. I think she's the sort of person where that pressure will help her. She'll be really on it today, I would have thought, and uh, she's definitely going quick in Rio. We've seen it and I think she'll just be ready, put it yesterday behind her and move on for the next day. After yesterday's southerly winds, instead of having Sugarloaf Mountain and the land masses having such a big effect on the racing, it should provide a more even race course today. And we'll see how that pans out for the British sailors. Thank you for joining us today. And please put any questions you have on Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag SailForGold. And you can win some official British sailing team gear. See you tomorrow, same time, same place.